Welcome back to Employment for Everyone. Uh, I am Francine from the Airmen and Family Readiness Center, and today I am joined again by Miss Wood and Miss Aptigar, and we are going to be hearing from Miss Jo about her employment experiences as a military spouse. So I will hand the floor over to you All right. to share with us what your experience has been. Um, so my husband has been in almost 28 years. Um, we've been married for 25, and um, in the beginning, um, we had young children, so I chose to stay at home. It just made more sense um, as far as like daycare and things like that. Um, once I did start looking for work, um, I believe my youngest was 10 at the time and said, okay, mom, it's time for you to go to work now. <laughs> <clears throat> um, so I chose to work outside um, in the community, and um, a position... Uh, in medical, which I absolutely love. So I stayed there for a while and this was in San Antonio and then we got orders to Tucson. Mm -hmm. So we moved to Tucson and I worked at um, the MTF there. I was a contractor and it was good money. Um, you know, it was a great position and I enjoyed it, but um, a position became available at the VA there. Mm -hmm. And that was my in to GS. Um, so I went GS, um, although the VA is different GS than it is military side. Mm -hmm. Um, so I was there for three years and we got orders to go overseas. Um, at three years, you're classified as term, I believe is what they call it or conditional. I, so I had hiring, rehiring privileges, we'll put it that way. So we go to Okinawa and, um, I wanted to keep my status, so I did everything I could to find a job. We were there for three years, and my first year, I sat looking for work and looking for work and looking for work. I finally got hired on at one of the MTFs over on the furthest side of the island, and mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> it was uh, a six-month process. Once I was notified that I tentatively had the job, it took me six months to get in the door. Um, I stayed there and, um, I finished out my time with that MTF and then we moved back stateside and, um, we moved to, uh, North Carolina and I was able to get another job there using my spousal preference. And being that I was an overseas returnee, you get one extra, you know, pump along yeah. the way. Um, so I was able to get in again. It took me eight months to get this job. <clears throat> um, I was there for three, almost four years. And then we, uh, where did we go? We went from there to Florida. And I started working at the MTF there again. It took me almost eight months to get that job. Um, so I was there, um, from there we came here and I chose not to work this time. Um, just being that, we would be here for two years. I went on LWAP. Mm. Um, LWAP is a wonderful thing, but it only lasts for 12 months. Yes. And so that is leave without pay yes. for those who might not understand Sorry. that reference. <laughs> um, so I did go on that. I was notified at our one year here that my LWAP was expiring. Um, so now I am just floating in the system. I'm, I'm still on LWAP. But I have lost my status in a sense that um, I could basically be put back in the bowl with everybody else that's applying for a job. Although leaving here, I will have the military, you know, the spousal preference and again, the overseas preference. Mm -hmm. So that will help. Yes. Um, as Bonnie said, it takes so long and yeah. it don't give up. That's all I have to say. Don't give up. Um, it is a long process. Um, once you get your foot in the door, you're usually good to go. Um, I think I, I, oh, it was good for me not to work over here being a command spouse and trying to help Bonnie, um, you know, so we can be a pair, um, help each other out, help our spouses, help the community, do what we can to volunteer. Um, but going back, I'm going back to Florida. Um, I will be working again. So um, I'm going to have to start this long process over again. 
that is one of the downfalls of being a GS. Um, it's a great opportunity. It's a great job to have, but the process takes forever. If there is one thing that we would ask as spouses, yeah, you know, especially coming overseas or even stateside, is to help this, help the streamline the process a little bit more so it doesn't take so long. Yes, um, you know, and coming over here, you know, we all have our resumes on USA Jobs. Of course. Um, I did find out that if you have your resume on USA Jobs and you come overseas, um, if you don't have a stateside number, you don't have an account with USA Jobs. Um, you will have to start all over. Um, and when you do, you will need to get with them. They'll give you codes so you can go in and update your resume and things like that. So that's just one bit of knowledge. If you can pass on to any of your spouses that you know are going to be coming over here um, in your squadron, um, let them know that there are obstacles that they need to overcome before they come over here. Um but yeah, I, I think that's my my main experience. I did yes. get in the system. It just took me a while. Yes. yes. Um, definitely some great lessons learned mm -hmm. and takeaways from that. Um, one, it does take a really long time. Um, I myself was in federal service before coming over here. I was applying for jobs in Korea for over a year. Um, so by the time I actually got a, you know, got the job, it, you know, then it was three, four months before I onboarded. So it is a very long process and you do have to have patience and mm -hmm. have resiliency through that. Absolutely. And it doesn't stop once you get in. Like you said, it was at every duty station. So it is something that um, people just have to keep in mind and mm -hmm. just, um, be, be aware of that so you can set your expectations. Um, another great lessons learned, and I've heard it from other people as well, not knowing about the USA jobs mm -hmm. and the US number yes. mm -hmm. um, account. So you know it takes a long time. Once you get those orders, start applying, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. Um, but don't turn your, your US number <laughs> off until you get here and you're able to transfer your account to another number. Mm -hmm. um, that's what I was able to do. I was able to just transfer it to my to my uh, new account, um, and I was able to save yeah. all of the things that I had built in USA Jobs. But that's because I was told that. Yeah. So tell people, share that yes. information, um, so that people don't lose all of those resumes because those are tedious in themselves. Oh my goodness! Yes. <laughs> We've already talked about those tedious resumes in another episode. Yes. Um, so yes, thank you both for Absolutely. sharing your personal stories with our community, so that our spouses can learn. Um, from from your lessons and hear about how you have been resilient and pushed through and made it work for you and your family. And I hope that there are families out there that something has resonated with you about these um, stories and um, really encourages you to keep with the process. And if you're interested in employment, please reach out to the resources that are available um, to help you with that. So uh, thank you both again for joining thank you for me. Having us. And thank you for tuning in. Bye. Bye.